churches in, in the uh, chapels in, in, in the university part. And uh, it's a Pentecost scene. So we have the Holy Spirit descending on the apostles, the Virgin here, uh, and disciples. And then four holy women here that want to, want to give equal balance as much as they can. This is a great opportunity to uh, give equal balance with the sexes uh, in, a, in a sacred composition because there were holy women and uh, men in, in the place of the sent of the Holy Spirit. And obviously this is the birthday of the church. Uh, the, the Pentecost is the birthday of the church, so I want to get that across. So I wanted to also get a kind of a Western uh, artistic influence here on the top part. And the bottom part here, I wanted to work with some uh, Eastern uh, spiritual, uh, Eastern Christian Orthodox spirituality. And their Pentecost image has this image of a of cosmos figure, which means the world. And what I have here is the light of the Holy Spirit coming down through the wings. I have the cosmos as a kind of a winged figure. And the light comes through the crack in the wings here and penetrates his forehead, which essentially is the Holy Spirit uh, coming and shining on the cosmos, on the world, and revealing the truth of the faith to the world. So it's, it's, this is kind of a, uh, a Western concept, and this is an Eastern concept, and I'm combining the two by using light and form. Uh, so this, this composition here is God the Father holding the Sindhane, which is an idea, I saw the, the, the Sindhane, which is the Shroud of Turin, I saw it this year, I was doing a master's in sacred art in Rome, uh, and we had a trip to Turin, and that inspired me to do this image of Christ on the tabernacle <coughs> here, and the door will be here. So I wanted to do an image of Christ so that generally when I receive the Blessed Sacrament Mass, I always look for an image of Christ which I can contemplate. And having the face of Christ on the tabernacle, I think, is very appropriate uh, because that gives you an, uh, an, uh, an ability to. Uh, Contemplate his face. And that's God the Father holding it. This is uh, a later composition I thought of doing uh, God the Father holding Christ. Uh, it's kind of like a Pieta form. And uh, this is the dead Christ. And Christ is spiraling down into the form here, which is the tabernacle. So, what I wanted to do with this composition was use the lower relief of the rest of the composition and the God the Father. And the only figure in full relief in the whole composition. Was Christ, and the idea here is to communicate vero presenza, the true presence of Christ, because he's three dimensional in a two dimensional composition. So he's much more, and this is for a university campus, because I know that the majority of the students haven't got a clue about their faith, and that's one thing you probably start to realize when you're here in Italy that uh, in Europe, very few people really understand their faith. Um, and you're very lucky to go to a very good school which teaches you faith and I'm sure you come from very good families also but this is to communicate very important concepts in a clear way to young people <coughs> so, and with, with emotion not just a cold this is this and this is this uh, you know the catechism like is really important but it's quite daunting but if you can trans transmit that truth through beauty and through uh, emotion, then all the better, because it goes straight to the heart. Uh, this is the off piece as it is now, so there's the, uh, you saw this part here of the uh, sent Holy Spirit, and then there's the tabernacle in the back, which is stepped in, and then the, Holy, the light comes down from the Holy Spirit onto the Virgin, uh, and she's giving us the church. That's the concept here. Uh, this is making the altar piece. So you have uh, that's Chris. He's from Porto. He's helping me there. And then I basically put it up on clay and uh, sculpt it away so that it leaves. Here we have uh, a baptism of Cody. This is Cody here. Now this guy's a very interesting character. He is one of five people who were baptized in the last two years, and those five came through the art school that I've been working on the, in, over the last few years. And this is just to illustrate how powerful art is. Cody is an incredibly talented artist. He's only 25 years of age. He is a head of sculpt, you know, he's one of the sculpture instructors in the Florence 
Pascal Mubar here. He is, uh, he was baptized year before last, so he's only a Catholic over a year, nearly two years, and he was commissioned uh, shortly after his baptism to do 16 life-size multi-figure compositions for a cathedral in Sioux Falls. Uh, and it's incredible. I mean, this guy is really talented, and he's, he's, he was only baptized a few weeks before he got this commission. So it just shows you the power of art. He came to the faith through our friendship, because he understood my language as an artist, and understood the importance of the faith, and he asked to be baptized, and his wife asked to be baptized. She's only 23, 24 and a half. And... Uh, so that's, that's her there, she's been baptized. And they were baptized by the Archbishop here in the Duomo on Easter, Saturday night, okay? Which is beautiful, because they were just married a few months beforehand. So what they did that night, they were baptized. They got the first Holy Communion. They had their confirmation, and they renewed their wedding vows, all on the same night. Pretty impressive, in front of a full Duomo with the Archbishop. Welcome home. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very, very... Uh, the Archbishop does his first Easter in, in Florence, and he thanked us afterwards for giving him the most beautiful Easter of his life. So, uh, the next year, what happened was Cody and Alina are here again. This is last Easter, and they're baptizing their child, their first child. And uh, the beauty of that is that uh, not only is he baptizing their first child, but also Cody's father here. Now, Cody's father is a very interesting guy. <laughs> <laughs> Cody's father, he said to Cody four years ago, no, three years ago, he said, when they were in Rome, he said, Cody, if you come Catholic, I'll cut your... Okay? <laughs> now, that was pretty hardcore, right? He... When Cody started doing catechesis with me, he said, do you mind if my father comes along? Because <laughs> he wants to know what we're doing. I said, okay, fair enough. And, I, and he was kind of, he was coming along and then he was kind of, when he went home, he was trying to cause problems with Cody and so on. Don't, that's all rubbish, blah, blah, blah. But he gradually realized that was true. And then he asked to be baptized. And here he was being baptized the year after Cody was baptized. <coughs> Now, the interesting thing is, <laughs> it kind of gets a bit uh, hard, but he called, he joked with Cody when he was only seven years old, he said that, I should have called you Brother Robert. <laughs> and you understand why. <laughs> and Cody, if you think about it, the poetry, the reason I mentioned it's not to be crude, but there is beautiful poetry in this, is that Cody is a child who came through a culture of death, he broke through, was born, came to the faith, brought his father to the faith. And not only did, that, did he do that, but he also, his father threatened to do the business on him. And what happened was, he ended up being baptized with the fruit of his love with Alina. And their child was baptized with him. So you have the grandfather, the child, being baptized together. I mean, it's, it's sheer poetry. And this is Osamu, one of my students, who was also Japanese. Uh, he's, he's, he, he was baptized 